my name is Stephanie and welcome to the Sea Shadow Box tutorial. Today I will be creating this gorgeous nightlight almost completely out of paper. It can be customized with your choice of patterned or colored paper or colored LEDs. A really fun project that would make a fantastic gift for a child or a child at heart. The files are available for download at my website www.decouvert.com. So without further ado, let's get our supplies and get crafty. Here we have our pieces for the 3D shadow box. You will have cut two long pieces marked with two slashes and you'll have cut two pieces marked with one slash on the tab here, you'll notice. And then what you'll do is you will fold them in a valley fold up the sides and then a mountain fold at this tab here. And then you will go ahead and you will glue them long to short long to short and then you'll just glue them here making sure to line up the score line with this here with the end of the other piece make sure that it's all lined up and then of course when you're gluing it and as you're gluing it making sure that it makes a nice clean corner here and it's able to fold easily downwards. Okay. Here I've completed gluing the inner sides, making sure that everything's lined up and the corners are crisp. Then you're going to take your one of your frame pieces, you have two of these, you're going to take one of these and you're going to glue these tabs down to this frame to the inner portion of the frame, making sure to line up the corners and line up the sides. You can turn it around and double check that everything is aligning properly as you glue. And I would say that the best thing would be to glue one side at a time, line it up, making sure that it's aligned here, and then off to the next and the next and the next. And once you've done that, we'll go to the next step. I have completed gluing the inner bands to our frame. As you can see, everything is lined up. So now we will be gluing our outer bands to the frame. So you'll have these pieces here, you'll have two pieces marked with three slashes on the tab and you'll have some longer pieces marked with a square on the tab. So then what you'll do, you'll go ahead and along the score line uh, you will fold them in a valley fold on each score line, tabs included, and then you will go ahead and you will fold them short to long, short to long, and one difference is that you will notice instead of gluing the gluing them together with this band on the outside we're gluing it with the band on the inside like so and you'll make sure that it's lined up again lined up with the score line here on the inside and you'll go okay, so i've completed gluing the outer bands together. Um, just make sure that you leave them open. Okay, so you leave one one tab open. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take your frame and you're going to line up each side on the score line against the edge of the frame. And you're going to glue all the way around here. So just make sure that it's, as you can see here, that you're lining up the score line, making sure that your corners are lined up and just go all the way around and carefully glue and do one side at a time. Don't try to do all the sides at once. Okay, so here we have our frame. Um, I've gone ahead and I put the skinny frame onto this side of our box and now I'm going to be adding the identical frame, the other one we have, 
and glue it down on this side. Um, now what you're going to do is you're going to make sure that you see you can sort of tuck this sort of seam allowance, if you want to call it that, in underneath the outside tab. Just sort of tuck it in there. So it just makes it a bit easier for when you're trying to adjust it as you're gluing it. And then what you're going to do is you're going to, now there's many ways of approaching this, but the idea is that you want to make sure that everything, as I was saying before, everything is lined up. These inside corners, the outside corners, the edges here, make sure that this is all lined up. Um, you could, one way of doing it would be to place your frame like this, and then to go ahead, you could lift, put this down, and you could line it up like so, and making sure that the edge of your frame is lined up against the score line. You could glue it down like this, and then go ahead so that at least your starting point is completely accurate, or you could come at it from this way and just glue the outside first and then go into the inside making sure that these edges here are lined up with that score line cornered that edge as well and making sure that these inner corners are all lined up so you'll go ahead and you will do this to every side obviously but maybe what you should do is just do it one side at a time let it dry then off to the next you may even want to you know glue this side and then the side opposite it just to make sure that everything is in place and then go ahead and do these sides so there's many ways to approach this um, you take a look and see what works best for you uh, but really take your time with it, making sure that the placement is correct and all should fall into a place. As before, there are many different methods to gluing this frame to the sides. What I've done and what seems to be working for me is I've gone ahead and I've glued the outer tab to the outer frame here. I let that dry. And then I've gone to the outer frame here, done the same thing, stick my fingers in here, trying to make sure that it's nicely set. And then I've gone to the shorter side, done the same thing, making sure that my edges are flush with the sides, my corners are lined up. And then I'll wait for it to dry and then go on to the next one. I, I mean, there, it, it, definitely wait for it to dry because it does shift. And, you know, you don't want to be gluing one side and have the other one shift as you're doing it. So then what I'll do is I will come in here and I will just go in and put some glue in here. You can see this. I'm putting some glue in here and making sure that I have enough let me get glue and I'm lining up this corner here this is I got a bit too much glue here but we just sort of try to wipe it off and then Slowly make our way and wiping as we go. You can see it's starting to, it sets pretty fast this glue. So you gotta kind of, you gotta work a bit fast so it doesn't come away from you. Okay, I'm just gonna run, make sure that my Everything is set up nicely here. Got this corner that's trying to come away from me. Just 
going to hold that down a bit. Now I got, I was a bit messy in my application of the glue on this. Um, I mean, don't worry, you really, it, it's, worry about the outside here, because that's what's going to be showing. This here is not going to be showing because we're going to have our back on. Okay, so I finished gluing the other skinny frame to the sides, to the inner side. Um, I went in and, you know, making sure that I was lining up this edge here making sure that this was aligned properly. The score line was aligned with the inner frame. And I went in here and I did money here with the glue and just slowly made my way, held it down to let it dry and then continued along. I mean, you could just run your glue around the tab and then hold it down, but sometimes it's a little bit easier to just go a little bit at a time, making sure that all your corners and edges are lined up and not to worry too much about you know the glue that's on the frame itself because that's going to be covered up by your outer frame so this you're going to be gluing down this is a thicker frame you'll notice it has a, a lip to it so that when you put your uh, layers in they won't come poking out from the back so it's just to prevent them from falling out the front. So there you go. So you'll be gluing that down, aligning the corners, aligning the edges, making sure that it's all aligned. And then we'll go on to the next step. Okay, so I've finished gluing um, our outer frame to the shadow box. Um, just a little hint or tip is if you're finding that there are some corners or edges that have lifted, what you can do is sometimes it's difficult to get the nozzle into those little crevices here, is that you can just put a little bit of glue on here. And then what you'll do is you'll just kind of tuck this in here in between the crevices and just stick a little bit of glue in there and just hold it down. Of course, I was a bit messy with my application, so, <laughs> but I'm sure yours will be neater than mine because I'm just trying to do this quick for the video. So when you first cut out these pieces, you will end up with layer one, layer two, layer two, layer three and with layer three see this layer here this is where your vellum piece will go underneath this okay and you will glue this like so okay so it'll fit underneath that particular piece right and as well, you'll have, I just put this in a little cup just to save it. So you'll have these little pieces that will also stick to the vellum. Okay, these tiny, tiny little pieces. They will go into here, they will stick onto here once this is underneath. Okay, we have the other grassy area with the openings that's so the light comes through so it gives that effect of shiny gold goes behind your treasure chest and here we have the um, sunken ship and the mermaid again holes for the gold line all of those up and then we have some more of the coral and sea grass and we have the lost city here of Atlantis, or whatever you'd like it to be. And again, we have some runes from the lost city. And here we have the beams of light that are coming down. Um, and again, opening for the gold. And we have the fish.
And in this case, uh, with this particular piece here, this is the backing, so you've got your piece of vellum, you're going to put your vellum behind, okay? So you're going to glue that as well behind here. So it'll give it a neat sort of effect, like sunbeams coming down from the top of the ocean. And that is that. Those are your pieces for the project. Well, I've been weeding this. And of course, you have to be very, very careful as you're weeding. Um, okay, so you can see there's some very, very, very fine lines. And you just go through, weed it first, and then take it off your mat. And I think the best way to take something off your mat is to turn it over and then pull this down, you know, pull the mat away from the paper as opposed to the paper away from the mat. That way it won't uh, roll on you or bend. Um, now, there may be some pieces that you need to get out. You see my mat's a bit old as is my blade. So what I do recommend is that you use a, um, a new blade and make sure that your mat isn't too sticky, but also make sure that your mat is clean. Um, you don't want a super sticky mat because it's gonna make it very difficult for you to get these fine pieces, this, the fine details off of the mat without ripping, um, without ripping it, uh, ripping your piece. So, so be cognizant of a non-sticky mat, Make sure you have it on the right cut settings. Make sure that you have a sharp blade. Um, and just take your time with it. Uh, if you don't get everything out as you're weeding it, you know, do as much as you can. Then take, pull the mat away from the paper very slowly. Use your, um, your spatula tool. I'll get this out here. This, this thing here. And you can sort of as you go along, get these pieces off the mat, get this, this piece off the mat very, very, very slowly. Um, it's a very helpful tool. I'll put a link to these tools in the uh, description. These are uh, from a set from Silhouette. Um, so that's what we need to do. So you're gonna do this to all of them. Again, same technique, everything I was talking about earlier is removing your paper by putting it down on the table and pulling away the mat away from the paper. And then slowly, if you can see this, I'll move it over here, is you can see when you start to get underneath here with your spatula and slowly pull away, okay? And just try to get in there just a little, very gently. And you just continue along, um, you know, especially these little just fine lines, you really have to take your time with it. And of course, making sure that your mat isn't sticky, isn't too sticky um, will really help with this. So you would just continue like so. Um, now these pieces over here, um, you know, they were cut probably because my mat is not uh, very clean. Um, but uh, you can go in afterwards and, you know, use your X-Acto and just sort of pull them, pull these little bits out. Okay, so I did, as you can see, I pulled this off this way first. So cause I'll, I'll, it's just to, so I slowly pulled this mat away from the paper. Now you can see that you know you've got these plants over here so rather than try to pull it off this way I think it's safer to try to pull it this area off this way. So we sort of start here okay up to a certain point to, to pull it apart to pull it away from the, the uh, mat and then we can come at this one from the other way. Now you could do this with, you know, as I was saying, pulling the mat, but because these little pieces are so fine, you really 
want to take her time with it and sometimes maybe it's easier sometimes with the spatula just to come at it just to loosen it up a bit very slowly oh you see see this bit here we want to be very careful with it okay and you just go slowly along be very careful check what you're doing Try not to go too quickly so as not to, especially these little bits here, see where the, the tentacles are and the fish meet here. So just slowly, sometimes you have to come at it from different directions to get at it. Okay. And I think these tools are not made for lefties like me. Um, so, there we go. So we're slowly, we're starting, okay, we're starting to get this off. So, I mean, you can start by pulling the paper, the mat, away from the paper. And then once you get to a certain point, when you get these little fiddly bits, slowly, you know, slowly inch them off the mat. I mean, this is not for the faint of heart. Um, this is definitely, you know, a labor of love. Um, but whoever gets this gift, I think, will be very happy because it's very beautiful. It's a beautiful, um, beautiful nightlight. And I think anybody would love, love one of these as a gift. If you have uh, a child in mind, I think they would love it. Or even just a friend. It's a great little nightlight. It's so pretty. It really lights up the room. Adds a certain ambiance and whimsy. Here we go. There we go. Oh, that. Okay, so success, partially, partial success. I'm going to go in, um, in these little bits here, I'm going to go in with my. Um, with my exacto blade here and I'm just going to go in and, and try to get these little bits off um, that were just sort of attached by a smidgen of paper just you know, be very careful when you're when you're doing this because it's so easy to rip it. Now I'm using, this is a particularly, this is not a very expensive paper. Um, this is from Staples. It's 110 pound by in a big um, bulk. Uh, and I, I'll put that in the description as well. Um, I use this. I mean, this is not the best quality of paper. So hence, I think this sometimes causes a bit of issues, especially on the little bits. But again, um, check your your settings on your machine. Check to see what um, is appropriate for the type of paper that you have. Uh, now you can see there's a lot of um, very fine details here. Uh, so, so I want to make sure that you remember that to um, this bit and this bit. Put these aside. So this bit here, okay, put that somewhere safe, I'll put it here for now, and this little bit, very tiny, I know, Ooh, huh. okay, and this little bit here, there it is, because that, is going to 
see when you take this off, this bit here, you're going to be putting vellum in behind. You're going to be going vellum behind this um, treasure chest, in which case you're going to be putting this back. You see? Like so. And then you're going to take your little half moon piece is going to go in there. So here, like I was talking to you about before, I'm just going to go over to a bit with you as I'm doing it. So we're going to place it like so, right? Just glue it around. Um, not to worry too much about this here. Uh, I mean, you might have trouble with your, you know, cutting out vellum with your machine sometimes. I mean, my blade is old, so it's gonna it's gonna pull up a bit, but um, you don't have to worry too much as long as there's an opening here. Again, it's just for the shininess of the gold for the light to poke through. So we're just gonna go along with our glue, and not too much. even put a bit too much but anyways so then we line try to line it up in there oops and then I did make it maybe just a twinge smaller so then the actual uh Now, if you find you didn't line it up quite correctly, it's okay. It doesn't have to be exact. This gives it a little play of light and shadow there. So I'm going to take my little tiny, 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 tiny little pieces here. And... That. Oh, oh, oh. There. So, again, very, very fiddly, let me tell you. It is fiddly, but it's worth it. It's so pretty once it's done. There. This will dry clear anyways. So that's the, the treasure chest. And, you know, if you do have trouble with some pieces here, you know, you can always sort of, I sometimes I put a little dab of glue here to solidify. Um, in the actual file, I did um, make these a bit wider for you, so it's not so tricky. But again, it is delicate, and just take your time with it when you're pulling it off the mat, like I was saying before. So there's our treasure chest. Off to the next. I'm cutting the spacers, so they're about um, three sixteenths wide. And I'll give you the exact dimensions later. Um, actually, I'll put them right up here. So, and how many you have to cut. But I just wanted to go over with you how to cut these. Now, you're going to need a really sharp blade. Um, because you'll have so much trouble otherwise. It'll just tear through it and it won't look very neat. And 
even though these are hidden, it's just, um, it's just nice to keep things nice and neat too. So as best you can. Um, so I just, uh, you know, I, I, with my ruler, I just measured out three sixteenths and then the length that I need, um, for the top and the bottom, uh, spacer. And so, you know, just going over this, you could, you know, you could use your, you could run against your blade and go from, you know, each one like so, but, um, I find it a bit easier going like across here. And sometimes you got to go over it twice. There you go. Just to make sure. I'm at a, at a kind of an awkward angle, but so if you just uh, go along here and and a lot of pressure using a sharp blade, and you should be able to cut out all the pieces that you need um, relatively easily. So here, this is the front of our second layer. And so what you're going to do to all of the layers is, except for the first piece, except for this one. This one we do not need to have spacers because it's going right up against the glass. This is your first layer. Okay, this is the one with the little fishies, angelfish, whatever. But on the rest of them, you are going to put your spacers. Then what we do is we glue them along the outside. I'm actually going to start with the smaller pieces for the top and the bottom. So I'm just going to put some glue here. And then try, you mustn't, one word of caution is do not glue these beyond your paper, okay? Because otherwise it won't fit into your box. And it does creep up on you. Um, so be very cognizant, very aware of that because that'll make it so you can't fit your project into your shadow box or into um, the box that you made out of paper. So we gotta make sure, just make sure that it doesn't go over because then it'll become really tricky. And you gotta take it all off and realign them and it's, it's very annoying. go over here we don't we want it back on the edge but not overlapping the edge of your paper okay just make sure right. and watch when you're maneuvering your paper around that you don't destroy your your plants or your seagrass or your coral or your tentacles, your jellyfish. Yeah. So, so there, we've got this piece. So this one will go, this is the top. So we'll go on top. So we're starting to get some depth here, right? So we're gonna do it to all of the pieces. And remember you're gluing it onto the front, not to the back, you're going onto the front of your piece, okay? may seem counterintuitive, but just glue it to the front. Um, and then we're gonna go, and then we'll do the same to all of the other pieces again. Oh, geez. So, the same thing here, all the way around. And then we'll have, it'll create the depth that you want. So here is the, um, the last layer with the beams of light that are coming down. So here what I'm doing is I'm putting in little bubbles. Now you could do it before you put the vellum on, 
um, depending on, you know, if you want to have bright bubbles or whatever, uh, it kind of looks a bit like pixie dust coming down from the sky or coming from, you know, you know from the, uh, from the uh, tops of the ski, sea type of thing. Um, now you just go along and I'm just using, you know, I'm just using a pen here. Um, I'm sorry, a pen, a needle. Uh, and you could use a upholstery needle for bigger bubbles closer to the bottom if you like. Um, it's up to you how you want to do this. You know, you just continue along and, you know, put little holes here and there. And use your little pen. See how you can sort of keep putting it up to the sky and see what, um, if you like the, how you like the effect. Um, you know, putting it up, putting it up against the light, see what you like. Um, and then you just continue along. You could put a few in here if you like. You can continue and keep going all the way along. And just, you know, be, just take a look and see how it looks with this layer here on top, just so you can get an idea of where you're at, how you're liking your bubbles. See if you, you know, prefer them, uh, you know, over there, more of there, just see how the composition goes and you can get a better sense of, of uh, how many you like. And so you just continue on like that. Again, you can either do this before you put the vellum on or after you put the vellum on. It's all depending on how bright you want these to be, these little sort of bubbles or pixie dust or whatever you want to call it. I have these lights. So you can get these lights. Um, this has got a string of 20 LEDs. It's powered by two AA batteries. It has a little switch here. Um, now you can add, I mean, you can play with this and see, you know, see how you like the composition. I've put three, I've taped on, which is scotch tape here. I've taped three lights here and I've, I've run the wire out through the corner here. Okay. So it can just sort of poke through and sort of play with it. Cause this is going behind your, your treasure chest. Now there's a few hot spots here. You may not like that. Um, I mean, this is sort of optional. You could, in fact, just put all the lights behind um, at the very back, if you like. It's depending on the effect you want. I've decided to put them here just so that there's a bit more light uh, coming through to highlight the treasure chest. So you can run it, you just tape it here and then continue your, your wire out through the, out through the corner. And then you're going to place it. You're going to place it in here. So you're going to place your treasure chest. And then you will place your, this piece here, like so. Okay. And then just let the cord run out through to the side. And then continue to put all your layers down until you get to the back. You see? So I was just running it out the corner here. So that's one way of doing it, depending on how many lights you have. Uh, I mean, maybe you have more, you, you could put a few more here. Just just watch for the hot spots. You may not like the effect, maybe. Um, just, just see how it's uh, sort of poking through here. You know, you can see there's a few. Uh, maybe I'll, if I turn on the light, you can see there's a, there's a few little hot spots. Um, but that, I mean, again, that's gonna be covered by the layers that are on top, but take a look, see how you like it. You may want to add others into, into layers behind, depending on how many lights you have. I only have 20 here. I recommend maybe 40 for this, uh, particular piece. If you like, uh, if you really want it lit up, um, any way you, any way you see fit, uh, you can also get color. You can also get lights that are, uh, remote control operated. So, uh, and they, will change to different colors. Uh, I can add that into a, a link in the description too. Uh, that's the possible idea as well. So um, so that's how I'm sort of putting the lights in uh, as I'm, you know, adding the layers into the box. Okay, that's an option. I put the front of the frame on. So now to insert 
what we're going to do is we're going to flip it over. Hopefully you can see it. And flip it over. And then, beginning with our front piece, we're going to turn it over and insert. Okay. And then our second piece, second layer, and we go. And our third layer, and our fourth layer, again, turn it around. And the back facing up and our mermaid again flip it over and some more coral and seagrass and the runes again flip it over foam side is is down go okay and here is our back with the vellum and I'm just gonna make sure that this is all good and then we can sort of take a peek as to what it might look like. I don't know if you can see that. Here we have our shadow box and we have inserted the layers into the box, making sure that it's flush to the front of the frame. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add these spacers. You should have about four left, two small and two uh, long. And then what you will do is to secure this, you just place these spacers in here, glue them against the sides like so, put the long ones in, make sure, just glue them to the side. You might want to glue them with the paper to paper. And that will secure the layers um, so that they don't wiggle around or fall to the back of the frame. Now you probably will do this prior to putting your lights. Here I've gone ahead and I put the lights on the back, but I suggest that you do this um, prior to um, prior to the lights. Here I am adding the lights to the 3D box back layer. And as you can see, um, here is where it's peeking out from where I I put the lights on the behind the treasure chest. I adhered some lights in the layer behind the treasure chest, and then here is the wire poking out from here. So then, in order just to keep things aligned and make sure that I have the out point, the out point for my light. Here's my battery pack here. This is the out point uh, in your file. This little area will be cut out. There'll be a little triangle that's cut out so you can run your wire through. So I just make sure that, you, I mean, you may have a situation like this. It's okay, you can leave this one loose. And then I'm just going around. I made sure that I taped this area up first, this area for the battery pack, because you need an out point for your battery pack. And then adhere this one. And then slowly but surely, I'm arranging these ones, these lights, and I'm just pointing them towards down towards the middle of the piece, and just continue along, taping them up as you go. Also, make sure that you're not um, that you're leaving a space here, about three quarters of an inch. So that you can glue this, you want it. This is the area that's going to be gluing onto the back of your frame. 
So don't put your lights or your wires in this space here. Just keep a clearance all the way around. And then you just tape along like so. You may have the other lights that are on thin, thin wires. Those are fun too. Um, these are a bit, these I find a bit sturdier, but um, you know, whatever you have on hand, whatever you think works well for you. And then you just continue along, just try to even, evenly space them as you go. And then double checking, you know, close it up like this and just see, you know, how you're liking the effect. Um, seeing if you have some spots that have too much light or poking through too much through the vellum, you may want to move them away a little bit. Just keep on checking it, turn off the light, see, see if it's coming along the way you like. Tape them. Now you may want to secure, I'm going to put this up like this actually, it's a bit easier to, it's easier actually to, to do it this way. To put your lights, have your box standing up and put your lights down here. Tape this all up. Make sure to secure this one here, the out point uh, for your battery pack. Make sure that one's secured a bit more because of course you're, you're going to be changing the batteries. You might yank on this wire. So you just want to make sure that it's stuck on fairly well. Um, once that's complete, then you're going to glue all of this onto here and close it up. And then we'll deal with um, the battery pack. Okay, so here is the battery compartment. So I have gone ahead and folded on the score lines all towards the inside. And what we're going to do is going to glue the tabs. A bit of glue here. And oops, I might put a bit too much there, but try to get your corners nice and crisp. And just hold it for a little bit and then if you like once that is glued down inside here then you could go ahead and glue in this little corner here just to seal the form and again here put one here it's just to seal the corner up so this is going to go, I'm going to glue this down onto the back of our frame. And okay, so this is the back of my shadow box. I've, I've added all the lights to this back layer, made sure that everything is okay. Now, I haven't glued around here yet just because I'm leaving open for uh, demonstration purposes, but yours will be glued down all the way around, making sure that we it's all adhered properly. We have our corners lining up, make sure we don't get too much glue around our box. And then yours will have a little cutout here to, um, to run your wire through. Uh, now you can, you have a couple of options to, uh, for the battery pack. You can either glue, or not glue, use a Velcro. And you just peel this off, peel this off, place it over here, stick it onto your battery pack, take this off and then stick it right here. And then you have access to your switch and you have access to your batteries. And then you can just lift it off and take your batteries in and out when you need to change them. Uh, alternatively, depending if you have one, if you have some lights that have a remote and you don't really uh, need to access the switch as much, 
uh, what you could do is you could use this little uh, battery pack cover uh, if you just want to make it look nice and neat, in which case you would be gluing it down and then gluing it down to here, putting your battery pack in here like so, and then of course this will make it a little bit trickier, but and then you could just close it up like that. If you just, I mean, that's if you want to cover up your battery pack. It's really, it's up to you how you want to do this. Uh, you may want to, uh, you may prefer to have a little opening here for your wire. Um, so see what, see what works for you, depending on the type of battery pack you have. Uh, you know, again, it's perfectly fine like this. I find this very easy with the Velcro. Again, you just peel it, stick it, stick it on. It's very accessible. Turn it on and off and nobody can see it. It's in the back. So there are the options for you in terms of lighting your shadow box, um, depending on what you're using. Um, but these these work great. Uh, and there's some with three, um, you know, with three batteries that probably light the 40 LED uh, light strings. So take a look for those because that'll make it even brighter. And so I will show you sort of where, what we're looking at now. So. Again, mine's not glued down the back, but you can see, let me turn this light off. There. And you can sort of see what we are working with. So, isn't that pretty? Let's see, I put the lights in front. Again, you can put the lights, you could probably tuck some lights in here, depending on how long your, your string is. So you could put, tuck some lights throughout the layers, uh, depending on how long, how many lights you have to work with. But um, there you have it, the C shadow box. Again, if you like this video, please uh, feel free uh, to subscribe uh, down below. And I have links to all the supplies that I've used uh, in the description. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, uh, please leave them below. Um, again, thank you very much for joining me on this tutorial and hopefully you will join me on many more. Thank you. Bye-bye.